So we have the AMD Radeon Pro graphics cards. What power can you get from these things? Now let's pause for a sec because I want to do something different with the conference videos and with these interviews because when you attend big conferences such as NAB, very niche focused conferences, it's pretty much assumed that you're an enthusiast. So these guys are going to hit you with the tech jargon and you know the buzzwords and are going to gravitate said enthusiasts toward their product. So following each time that we interview someone, I'm going to come back here, you'll see me here just like this, and I'm pretty much going to paraphrase what they said in English. And you'll see little notes at the bottom in certain sections where I feel like some context should be provided. And that's likely at least one thing I'm going to elaborate on after that person's done speaking. With that said, let's enjoy what um, AMD was showcasing at NAB's 100th anniversary conference. You walk around the show floor and you see a lot of these new digital cinema cameras and you think about people that are shooting in 12-bit color and 12K resolution and all these like crazy high ends. And I mean, everybody's even walking around with like an 8K camera in their pocket these days. Yep. So the term that I use a lot when describing these two new products is more and it's more pixels, more polygons, just more resolution, more layers, and just more content creation. So the idea here is that, that we're, we're not talking specifically around any one workflow, but whether you're doing two-dimensional graphics, like video editing, compositing, color correction, Adobe Premiere, yeah. DaVinci Resolve, and things like that, or working in things like Unreal Engine or Maya and on the 3D side, it, this, this idea of the deliverables being much higher resolution and much but higher frame rates and again more and more and more this is going to be targeting all of those industries and all of those different workflows uh, again allowing just more the whole idea is that people's everyday cell phone it's an everyday item are 8k they're just carrying around 8k cameras let alone the professional cameras your computer has to be strong enough to handle those files and run them smoothly and allow you to edit them or even play them back really phones being so high res with their cameras is one reason these smartphones keep having to step up even the phone's processing power it's not the only reason but it's a contributor to why your smartphone's like a real laptop in your pocket but these computer props would allow you to run said files without any issue especially edit them so when he says more pixels he means those tiny tiny squares you might see on your tv screen if you were to walk up to it with a magnifying glass. Like your TV is basically a giant mosaic grid. It's just a little, it's too small for you to see. But each one of those little squares are pixels. And the more of these you have, the more detail you'll see and the more clear the image can be because that's more squares being able to show more colors, different colors and more shades. And it's one reason why a high megapixel camera can provide very large, clear printed images. You use those for your posters then resolution is how many of those pixels are on that screen. So a 4K TV is 3,840 pixels wide. They just round it up. So then I'm gonna let you guess how many pixels are across a 1080p TV screen. It's actually 1,920 pixels wide, but 1080 pixels vertically. I don't know why they did it that way. So lastly for this section, polygons. Polygons are the building blocks of 3D models. They're like Legos. So the more polygons you have, the more realistic and crisp looking the 3D model is. And the more polygons you're using on a project, the harder your computer will have to work to process all those polygons and keep all those polygons in real time, you know, on your computer where you can see them. So you might hit too many polygons and crash your computer but not if you have the proper computer components. Now let's check out the differences between the 7800 and the 7900. What's the, what's the price tag on these guys? We want it to be, uh, you know, bring out fantastic performance, but also be disruptive. Yeah. Um, and so the W7800 is gonna be coming out with a list price at uh, $24.99 US dollars. Okay. And then the uh, 48 gig uh, Radeon Pro W7900 is gonna be coming out with a suggested detail price of just under $4,000. Okay. So $39.99 uh, suggested detail price in US dollars. Mm -hmm. So very, very compelling price performance for customers. We want one of these, so watch the ads. <laughs> Why? When when would you need this one versus um, the, the 7900? Sure. So the 7800, it really comes down, uh, I think, uh, a couple of things. So the big differences here um, are going to be the frame buffer, like I talked about, 32 gig versus 48 gig. Mm -hmm. um, it's also going to be the TBP or total board power. Yep. You're going to come in at just, I think, about 260 watts on this and 295 watts on this. Mm -hmm. So if you have the uh, particular model or 
uh, input of that, that does have a larger frame buffer, like up to 48 gigs or more than 32, mm -hmm. this is gonna be what you wanna go with. Mm -hmm. But if you don't necessarily, and you wanna maybe stick uh, within a particular budget for that you know, sub $2,500 price point, and 32 gigs is gonna be enough, then this is gonna be a good card for you as well. And you know, we, we see some folks you know, think that a great, this is gonna be perfectly adequate, or they might wanna future-proof themselves. Yep. And like I said before, with that uh, DisplayPort 2.1, you're future proofing yourself on the displays as well because you can't handle that higher end data bandwidth that's going to be coming out you know when these displays uh match that that technology I'll tell you we're very unique in the industry right now uh being able to show graphics and processors in the same booth at the same time so uh, i'd like to hand it over to my friend uh, andy parma and he's going to talk a little bit more about the processor side of the amd business so 32 gigs and 48 gigs are what their two latest cards offer so with these graphics cards gigs are referring to its ram it's random access memory sometimes referred to as vram and vram is like a special memory designed to hold the video files the graphical data and the photos that your computer is working with like in the moment it's like it's pretty much like you have your main workspace but you have a separate desk over here where like you do all your rc stuff and that way you don't clutter like your main desk so clutter on a computer means it's going to slow the computer down so clutter means slower speeds because your computer is it's working too hard so the bigger your vram the more of those digital assets your graphics card can hold and still provide you a smoothly operating machine so yeah you can have a lot going on and it's still light on your computer because it's strong and gpus also dictate the resolution and like how many displays you can have attached to your computer because everything displaying on your monitors is also you know memory being used by the gpu now let's wrap up the AMD video by talking about some processors, some CPUs. So one of the things that I have the privilege of doing is working with our customers for Threadripper Pro based workstations. And one of the things that's unique about Threadripper Pro is it is the best processor to pair with professional graphics to get the most performance out of them. So again, those new 7000 series graphics cards that Jimmy talked about, mm -hmm. if you wanna get the maximum performance out of them, take it full advantage, of that uh, DisplayPort uh, 2 technology that he talked about, take full advantage of the Infinity architecture. Some companies call it a, a chiplet architecture that is new with these graphics cards. The best processor to pair them with is AMD Threadripper Pro processor. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be the one you wanna get that's not from bottleneck in the power release. So what we're showing in this part of the booth is the Lenovo ThinkStation P620. This was the first workstation available using Threadripper Pro processors. These are already available, or there's something coming out, and um, if they're not out yet, when will they be out? So the Threadripper Pro processors and the workstations using them that we're talking about today also have the Dell Precision 7865 workstation and workstations from Box, Puget Systems, and other partners that are using Threadripper Pro. They are available. They're available from leading workstation manufacturers and some of our key partners, Dell, Lenovo, Box, Puget, many others. But there are a lot of folks in our industry that like to build their own machines. And so you can get Threadripper Pro processors and Radeon Pro processors in a, what we call a processor in a box, and you can build your own config. So however you like to, to, to do it, we can do it for you. So if you want to pre-config, if you want to build your own, you got our, our graphics cards and our processors available either way. Uh, the new Radeon Pro 7000 series graphics cards have been announced and they will be available very soon. So in short, their high-end processor or CPU, the Threadripper Pro is the most compatible processor to pair with your 7000 series GPU from AMD. And it's because of the Infinity and chiplet architecture that makes them optimize for each other. So what's chiplet architecture? Well, it happened as a necessity for AMD, typically a CPU is built as one piece. And over time, as the chips have gotten more powerful, they've become more expensive to build in one piece. So now instead, smaller chips are created that have individual tasks and they're connected to make them one big piece. And the reason you might hear industry professionals interchange those terms is because Infinity Architecture allows those smaller pieces of chips to communicate. It's a development that makes communication between the chips as fast and as efficient as current tech will let it. This was only one stop on our days long trip to this year's NAB conference in Vegas. So check out some of the other videos. There'll be some in the end cards and the description. There's even a whole playlist. So I welcome you to binge. Until next time.